There's an interesting correlation that I've noticed between ships of uh, sailing ships, ships on the water, and spaceships and space. All of them seem to be correlated with the number 17. And uh, to see it, we're going to do just kind of like, it's going to be a lot of Star Trek in this for all the Star Trek fans, of which I am one. It's going to be like when you go on the, uh, in the, uh, the captain's quarters there in the ready room or whatever they call it. And uh, behind the captain, there's always these old pictures of former vessels that were called Enterprise, you know, and they go all the way back to selling ships and everything else. So we're going to kind of do the same thing and we're going to see how they, there's so many 17s involved. So let's just start with this little interesting gem that I just discovered a second ago. The USS Piedmont AD 17. I don't even know what AD means. I'm sure my brother probably knows, but um, let's just start with that with the 17 right there. And while you're looking at that picture, we're going to talk about some other 17s. Okay, my brother was on the USS Cole, and Cole equals 17 and full reduction, which if you don't know what I'm talking about or you're new, I'm talking about this calculator right here. It's called the Gamatronator.com. And uh, all you do is just open up your ciphers right here, you know, go to, uh, go to Tools, Calculator, and you open up your ciphers, and then when you type in a word, it'll show you the value of those words that you punched in in various ciphers. See, and the ciphers appear below as you run the cursor over. Very simple to understand, okay? So when you type in USS Cole, or just Cole, I guess, you see how it's, it sums to 17, okay? Like Navy sums to 17, you know, 17. And, and both of them, Cole and Navy and Yemen, by the way, were all 19 as well. And you know what happened there, of course. So, and there were 17 killed on the coal. I don't think that's a coincidence. You say, well, you can't control an explosion. Well, I don't know. You know, I don't know what happened. I don't know how it happened, but I know that, that they were more than happy to report it. So, uh, let's see. The USS Lusitania on 5 7 15 is when it was hit or sank, and it was laid down previously on... August 17, another 17. The USS Maine, which was used in another false flag, was commissioned on September 17. <laughs> There's a lot of history between the Navy and the number 17 and boats in general. There was actually a book called Ship 17, which I was kind of looking for, it, but I didn't see it come up here. But um, that's when I found this other thing. But um, there is a book out there called Book 17, and it is about a book described by, oh, was it Herodotus, I think? And it is about a ship that sank, an Egyptian ship that sank in the Nile River that was recently discovered. So again, here we find shipping and 17 and boats and all this put together. There, I also found an article where a sailor was killed on the USS George H.W. Bush on September 17 as well, in 2018. Seems like they really like, I'm sure that a lot of other people have died on boats as well, but for some reason they're more than eager to report the ones that happen at 17. And an interesting also, just to throw out on the side there, that 17 years after the coal incident, it was the Parkland incident and 17 people died on that as well you know coincidence yeah okay if you say so okay now space all right you take ships and obviously ships and space have a lot in common well where did the space race get started in America flight and everything well with the it started in Ohio right now I want to show you how that 117 Okay, well, it's a special number for a lot of reasons. It has to do with the Fibonacci sequence, okay, that it repeats every 24 numbers. And if you reduce the numbers and then add them, they sum to 117. At, not the first go-around, but every 24 numbers after that sums to 117. Well, so it's a very important number for a lot of reasons, but you'll see that the 17 is present because Ohio, Buckeye, yeah, Buckeye's 117 reverse ordinal. 
Now you're going to start to see real quick how this starts to relate to space and how we're st still taking the ship and the 17 theme and just taking it to the next level. Okay, James T. Kirk is 117, you see? So if you thought I was reaching because of that extra one, well, the rules of numerology and the rule of coalescence, you can add a one and it, or to take away a one or, or even the value of one, and it doesn't change the, the meaning anyway. So technically, it wouldn't be against any rules anyway. But as you can see, James T. Kirk sums to 117. You say, oh, no, it's just a coincidence. Well, okay. John Luke Picard is also 117 in the same cipher. You see, you got to understand that reality is scripted and fake and false. And just like most of the things that happen in our history are in some ways coded with the things that they want to happen in the future or with the way that they want you to think about things. So that sometimes they actually happen, sometimes they don't, but they're conditioning your mind to think a certain way. So they'll use the same numbers and all this because to them it gives them a a type of magical if you will not not in a metaphysical sense but it gives them a power over you and then that's in their minds okay it's in their literature they feel like this this math does this for them okay well so we had Ohio Buckeye James T Kirk John Luke Picard William Riker you know number one right look at the Jewish cipher 117 and then you know th threes on there too not a coincidence just another 117 and then look at the uh, the first in sequence okay Jonathan Archer obviously the show was made later and it's 1017 again not a coincidence okay and um, space equals 17 to begin with I thought it was interesting. I found a uh, picture. I bet if I try to look at it, it'll probably like stop my recording. But I found a spaceship in uh, a, an actual rocket that was being built in India. I think maybe it already launched or whatever, and it actually had a 44 painted on it. <laughs> Space equals 44 and 17. <laughs> I mean, that is freaking hilarious. Okay, so you probably know that um, you know Apollo is the uh, Reverse of 17, 71, okay, and the NX01, which was the first, um, the first Star Trek, um, there we go, the first uh, Star Trek um, Enterprise, okay, it was called the NX01, let's see, I put a picture of it right here, and I think it's my favorite one, <laughs> I just always thought it was really cool looking, uh, plus, you know, I don't know, I th always, I kind of like this series better, just, because they're just getting used to using the transporter and all this stuff, okay? Well, by the way, if you understand that it's all fiction, that the way they script everything is fake, but then it has less power over you, okay? It's not, this is a lot of it, you, you don't even understand that it's it's fake, okay? You, you think the news is real, and but it's not real, okay? It's no more real than this because they're using the same conditioning to try to condition your mind. But if you're aware of it, it doesn't have the same power over you. But anyway, so the NX01, let's punch that in. See, you see it's 17 right here, okay? And it was also called the ISS, see the uh, 17 in the septenary right there, Enterprise. One, 176 and 175 in English ordinal and reverse ordinal. Again, you're seeing the 17s. No mistake, no no question. And of course, what was the original Star Trek from the 60s called? It was called the NCC 1701, right? I thought this article was pretty interesting here. That uh, 139 best Star Trek. You know, 139 is uh, Freemasonry equals 139. We'll get onto that with the Borg too, because Borg. See, Borg equals 139. You know, Freemasonry. And what, what is Freemasonry worship? Well, it comes from Kabbalah, which worships the cube. And what is the Borg? Well, they ha they fly around a big cube. That is not an accident. You can tell it's not an accident. It sums to 139, like Freemasonry, okay? <laughs> it's not a mistake. Oh, you might even notice that real rockets, like the Gemini 5. 171, you know, 17 again, right there, in reverse order.
It's amazing how much time and effort that Star Trek took to code so many of their characters and words that are in the series. For instance, like Spock. Okay, Spock is uh, 19, right? And what is Spock? Yeah, he is a Vulcan. <laughs> 19, okay. <laughs> and Spock, who also... Go back to Spock here so you can see it. Spock is 26 right here, right? Reverse full reduction. And in the next generation, who replaced him? Well, Data, right? And 26 again, you see. Not a coincidence. They they think this through and they plan it out like this. I'm telling you, that's what they do. Okay. And you might even notice that uh, two of the en original enemies in Star Trek, of course... They eventually became their friends, but the Klingons was 35. You might have noticed if you were really paying attention there, Vulcan also sums 35. Okay. You might have noticed that uh, Spock sums the 64 in English Ordinal. And very close to that was another Vulcan from the um, Starship Inter or from uh, the Enterprise series. And uh, her name was T'Pol. Okay, and it's 63, just one off from 64. So very close. Not by accident. An intentional creation. Um, I, I even put in Voyager there to um, see what that looks like. And I said, oh, wow, that, those are all the same numbers for Saturn. Look at 93 and 96. You know, Saturn worship, really, at the end of the day. Because, you know, for thousands of years, the furthest anybody knew of the planets was Saturn. And um, even Chrono, Kronos, which eventually was called the Vulcans, I mean the Klingons' homeworld, rather, uh, is another name for Saturn. Okay, so let's, uh, in fact, check it out. There were two original enemies of, of the uh, Federation. Okay, the Vulcan, I mean not the Vulcans, but the Klingons and the Romulans, right? Kronos is where the uh, Klingons lived, and Kronos. Here, I'll just I'll punch it in there and then show you. And Romulus are pretty close to the same. <laughs> Three ciphers, you know, are exactly the same. Are very close. 29, 29, 70, and 70, and 43, and 34. You know? <laughs> 119, that divine feminine number. You gotta love that. <laughs> okay, well, now... The... Um, this uh, Star Trek, and I just borrowed this from the library, okay, this new Star Trek Discovery, which actually was pretty cool except for all the queer crap in there and everything, okay? So, you know, if you have a weak stomach, you'll have to skip parts of it. It's kind of gross, okay? Well, anyway, the um, you'll see right here the lettering on it, NCC 1227. Well, I've done plenty of videos on the significance of 127 now, you know, like Pearl Harbor is... Well, uh, was on December 7, which is 12-7. World Trade Centers 1, 2, and 7, you know. But primarily here, we're talking about pi. Because 22 divided by 7 is one of the best, most used approximations for pi. Okay? And if you don't believe me, well, what does NCC stand for? Somebody else pointed this out. And I thought, oh, wow, how did I not see that? Well, N is the 14th letter, and C is the third letter. You know, 314, 3.14 is pi. And uh, it kind of reminds me of a story that I've told plenty of times on the on other videos. How on August 19, 1965, on Launch Pad 19, the Gemini 5 rocket, which we already said sums the 171, you know. Okay, well, on that date, Gary Young 22, see so there's a 22, and Theodore Ballinger 17, see the one and the seven, stopped the rocket, the Titan rocket, from taking off. Because they walk, supposedly, according to the article, they got too close to the launch pad. And guess what time? 108, you know. Goal sank at 1118, but we're not going to go into that right now. I mean, I guess we could because, you know, Star Trek The Next Generation sums to 118. <laughs> so they're definitely related, right? Star Trek The Next Generation sums to 118. What, what day are we uh, warning everybody about? August 10 and 11? And here, the Star Trek, the next generation. Remember how it always starts after World War III? Warning, warning, warning.
Okay, and look how it's a 112 over here, just like regular, just Star Trek is one, one one twelve, which is the alt dialing code for 911. See the 112 over here, and Star Trek Enterprise sums to 119. So they're all related: 119, 112, 118. Just as we say a whole lot of other decodes. So we get the. Also, we had the, the Klingons, they would uh, fly a uh, spaceship they called the Bird of Prey, which sums to 664, and again with the 118. <laughs> and uh, the first one to discover, the, well, not discover so much, but the first one to go to the Klingon home world was Jonathan Archer. Okay. Jonathan Archer. And again, 64. So you can see all this stuff was very carefully put together, and it it's to, to sculpt reality for us. But if you're aware of it and you understand what's going on, it doesn't have the same effect. So again, thanks for watching, and please like, share, and subscribe.